Dr. Deming's role is that of the typical American plant foreman using accepted management techniques. Do you understand that continuation of your job depends on your own performance? Yes, sir. So long as you make enough white beads, you'll have jobs. If costs start overrunning revenue, management will close the place down. In other words, your jobs are dependent on your own performance. Have I made it clear, do you think? Think you understand? I'll explain the job. Material comes in in the form of a mixture of white and red beads. Your job is to produce white beads. Is that clear? White beads, not red ones. You understand there are two vessels here, that they're rectangles. Are you clear? One is bigger than the other. You understand? Your job will be to grasp the larger vessel on the broad side, pour the distance of eight centimeters into the smaller vessel from the corner to mix the material. You understand I kept this in the same plane. You understand gravity? <laughs> gravity is dependable and cheap. <laughs> Tilt it. Do not shake. Do not bend it around. Just keep it in the same plane. Gravity will do the work. Then back again from the smaller vessel into the larger one. At a port a distance of eight centimeters. This is all in your day's work. You will then produce 50 beads. We have work standards here, 50 per day. You will then take the paddle. The paddle has 50 depressions in it. You will push it down into the beads, down into the beads. Gentle agitation. Are you watching? <laughs> you will then raise the paddle, keep the axis horizontal, Tilt it 44 degrees. Any excess beads will roll off. I purposely made some red beads so that you may see what they look like. <laughs> you understand? You will then carry over to inspector number one. Inspector number one will count number of red beads, record it on her paper. Chief inspector will compare the two counts of the inspectors. If they uh, disagree, there may be a mistake. If they agree, there may be a mistake. <laughs> Chief, Chief Inspector is responsible for the count. Announce the count. Ten. That's it. <laughs> and the word dismissed. Dismissed. That's it. All right, proceed. Eight centimeters. <laughs> Go till it, keep it in the same plane. Don't need to be all day about it. <laughs> and back again. <laughs> Rapid learner. <laughs> Thus far, grasp the pedal, paddle on the broad side, two fingers down into the beads. Gentle agitation, then no more. Raise it, axis horizontal, 44 degrees, excess roll off. Rapid learner. <laughs> Carry over to inspector number one. Then to number two. Man have decided to put on a numerical goal. Not more than three red beads in any workload. Zero is acceptable, one, two, or three, but not more than three. We have work standards here, 50 per day, no more, no less. Not more than three red beads in a workload. Any questions before we get into production? What if we have more than three? What if we have more than three? Recorder will record it. We'll go on to your record. <laughs> we have the merit system here. <laughs> We reward good performance. <laughs> we penalize poor performance. <laughs> All right, we're in, we're in production. All you have to do is follow procedures rigidly. No departure, no comment, no questions. We'll proceed. 
No records were kept during the apprenticeship, but this is production. Now records will be kept. Good performers will be given merit raises. Poor performers will be put on probation. As the audience watched the stage or closed circuit television, Mike and Leon got off to a bad start. The standard is three red beads. They had eight and 14, and now it's Karen's turn. Karen's got a job anywhere. <laughs> Gentle agitation, and no further shaking. Perfect. Excellent technique. As you remember, the management stated that unless this fourth day were substantially better than the other days, they would close the place down, sweep it up. But somebody in the management came through with a fantastic suggestion. A new style of management. Magnificent. Instead of closing the place down, <clears throat> they're going to keep it on, keep it going with the three best workers. Our best workers are Mike, Karen, Bob. Mike, Karen, Bob. They're not to be our best workers. We're going to keep the place open for the best workers. Fantastic contribution to management. Now, beyond. Melvin, Paul, we thank you for being such willing workers. You did your best. Thank you very much. Pick up your pay as you go by the window. Stay in business for the best workers. No doubt about it. That'll do it. We're going to work two shifts. Have to keep up production. Two shifts. Proceed on the first shift. Keep the place open to the best workers. Fantastic contribution to management. Some companies take the top percent of the class. Serves them right. <laughs> Why weren't you doing it all along? Look, if Mike could make five, anybody could make five. That should be the limit. It's perfectly obvious. No question about it. Proceed, Karen. You know what your job is now. Eleven, the Smith. What happened? All right, Bob. Fifth day, going to show substantial improvement, real improvement. We have only the best workers on the job. Eight, the Smith. Forty-two. Sixteen makes fifty-eight. What happened? 58. Just about the worst day of all. Almost equal to the worst. What happened? I was looking for improvement. Management have decided to close the place down. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you very much, Karen. Pick up your pay. Willing workers, this goes on your record. He was a willing worker on the red bead. Here is the first lesson from the red bead experiment. We've said this before. And may very well again, it's important. Being a willing worker, doing your best, trying your hardest, simply are not enough. None of that by itself produces quality. <laughs>